very auspicious uh, day. It's both, uh, it's a Sunday, it's a beautiful Sunday in springtime, and it's also Easter Sunday, so it's a time for rebirth, and it's also the birth, the official birth of a new album that is coming out both on CD and vinyl, which is a big, big deal for me because this is the very first album in my 35-year career that came out on a vinyl, which when I was a kid, this was the way I listened to music. All my albums were on vinyl. And I remember in my teenage years, I used to blast the stereo system and the whole neighborhood would hear Stevie Wonder and Pink Floyd and Beatles and it all came from vinyls and the sound was so beautiful. And by the time I got to be a creator in the music business, there was no more vinyl industry. When I went to a music school in the 80s in Boston, in 1985, I started um, music school in Boston. There were no, no vinyls anymore. There were only CDs. And so the entire career in, for me in my career in music business was all around printing CDs. And now CDs are disappearing and everything is on digital. But there's a rebirth, a rebirth of the vinyl, which is very exciting. And when I got this vinyl, from the manufacturing plant and I, I opened it and I took out, it was a special feeling, you know, to take out this paper sleeve and to see this disc and to see the name Nefesh, you know, the name of my new album, Nefesh, to see it on it and to see side A, side B, which is incredible. There was, n for 35 years, I haven't experienced the issue of side A, side B. The, some of the music is on side A, some of the music is on side B. Many people don't even know what it means anymore. But on vinyl, you have two sides. And the big, big thing, beside of this ritual and touch, uh, this, this sensual feeling, this real world, not a virtual world, but real world feeling of holding the album, the big, big, big thing is to put it on a turntable and to listen to it. And, you know, beside of the warmth of analog, analog sound has a special warmth to it. But there's also a certain depth. It's almost like a 3D experience, but not quite 3D. But it's, it's a feeling that you close your eyes and you put this music on a vinyl and you hear it and you feel the instruments in the room. You feel the performers and the instruments actually resonating in the room with you. There are, there are more vibrations. There are more vib sound vibrations on a vinyl compared with CD and compared with digital sound. That is just um, the phenomena. It's a physical scientific phenomena that when we record on digital, we are digitizing the sound waves and we are forcing the sound wave from being a wave to be one and two numbers which create a square grid all those all those sound waves the wavy sound waves that naturally they are wavy they are being described by numbers to be really made from steps steps on a grid one twos one twos it's all numbers it's all grid and it's so small that when we look from far it looks like a wave it does look like a wave and it sounds like a wave, but it's an approximation of the real sound wave with numbers. And that's what digital music is and that's what CDs are. And that's why it's slightly sound different than the vinyl. And people who are really into music and into sound are now moving to vinyl. There's a big move to vinyl. And that's why my new album, Nefesh, Sacred Music, uh, Hebrew prayers for Sola Oud, uh came out on a vinyl. So I, I highly recommend all of you to try to listen to music on vinyls again and and see how you feel. It, it has a different feeling and there's a reason for that feeling. So let's begin with the trailer. This is a two minutes video that is promoting the new album and I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll talk more about where it was recorded, 
and how it was recorded and I'll entertain your questions and then we'll, we will have two more clips after that. And here is the album. So this is the album trailer. I'd like to share with you a little bit about um, how this was recorded. And then I'll, uh, I'll be happy to take some questions and show more videos. So this was recorded in uh, the sanctuary of a large synagogue in Los Angeles called University Synagogue. And last uh, high holidays, they asked me to create uh, something for COVID something that people could watch at home during Yom Kippur, which is the, the, the Day of Atonement, uh, an intense day of fasting in Jewish tradition. And they wanted me to record a meditation, an hour of meditation, um, just with a solo oud, with this instrument that I play, the, the Middle Eastern lute called oud. And I went into the sanctuary, and it was COVID time, so nobody was allowed to be there. It was empty. Um, they opened the door for me and disappeared. And I was alone in the temple. I brought my recording gear, video gear, uh, my recording studio gear, and I set it up for recording. And I was dressed all in white as I usually dressed up for concerts. And I was ready for a concert, but there was nobody there. And I knew it, it's going to be empty, but I thought about the people that normally there in the temple, and I, I played for them, and also I played for myself, and I played as a prayer in that sanctuary, in that sacred space, right next to the scrolls of the Torah behind me. And because I was by myself, I was uh, inspired to take off my shoes and some uh, radio uh, interviewer, when I did a radio interview about this new album two weeks ago, um, Nikolai from uh, Minnesota Public Radio, he asked me, he, he's a professional cellist, and in the interview he said to me, I noticed that you recorded this album uh, bare feet, and I noticed that in the video, I noticed that you're so into the music, you got so deep into the music and your face expression, you were so intense and the music was so passionate and intense and inspired. And I thought to myself, maybe it's because you took off your f shoes. So maybe, maybe I should also take off my shoes when I play the cello and maybe that's going to help me uh, get to that place that you were in, this incredible deep place that you were in and and that that was that was funny to hear but it was also not not that funny because there's something about it and i wanted to share with you uh, the reason why i took off my shoes and i was bare feet in this recording is 
there's a reference in the Hebrew Bible when Moses first have a mystical experience. The very first time Moses hear a voice, the voice of God in the desert. It's in front of the burning bush. And the voice that comes out of the burning bush tell Moses, Shalna lecha mal reglecha. In Hebrew, it means take off your sandals, take off your shoes off your feet. And the reason is because you are, you are standing in a sacred space. It's a sacred space. And there's a whole tradition in the Middle East, in Islam and in Judaism, that when you enter a sacred place, you take off your shoes and you clean, you wash your feet because... It, this comes from, des from the desert civilizations where people lived in the desert and walked miles and walked months to do pilgrimage to sacred place. And when they arrived at the sacred place, their feet were so dirty from the travel that they would first wash their feet, take off their sandals, wash their feet, and then enter. And this tradition still is in effect in all mosques in, this, in the uh, Islamic tradition. There is always a water fountain in an entrance to a mosque until today. And it's a ritual. It's a ritual of cleansing, uh, entering into a sacred place with clean feet uh, and taking off your shoes, which represent the cover for your feet when you walk in the world and you walk over dirt and you walk over things that are not clean and pure. And so you ought not to bring that into the sacred place. And there's many, many, many rules about sacred places in Judaism, how the priest, there's a whole chapter in the Bible about the, the, the rules for the priest, how to be pure, uh, the priests who would serve in the sacred place. So for me, taking off my shoes before going up to the sacred space next to the scrolls of the Hebrew Bible, it was about cleaning, cleansing, purifying myself in order to be a good vehicle for the prayers that I'm going to play through the Oud. And part of it was taking off my shoes. And that explains why in the video you see me uh, recording with uh, bare feet. That, that's the meaning of it. That's the reason for it. I know for some people it looks really strange, it looks really funny. Um, it, it's for no other reason by, but uh, what I shared right now. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the process of making this album. So it was recorded originally for this meditation session for the University Synagogue on Yom Kippur, September 2020 during uh, the pandemic and it was broadcast at one o'clock on that day and um, I felt that there was something really special about this recording. I felt that I've reached something that I, I normally don't when I just play this material by, by myself and also there was a really strange uh, occurrence in this event when I recorded it in front of an empty synagogue. I don't know why, but I, I've done this. I've done this for several years now with with the congregation. So the last four or five years, I've been playing for them on Yom Kippur, a solo oud for an hour and a half for meditation, afternoon meditation. And I always had a song list, which I prepared. I prepared the, the order of the program. And this time, I don't know why, I think either because I, was, I felt that I already have done it for several years and I just had it done so many times that I, I didn't have to prepare a song list, but I didn't prepare a song list. I went into this recording without knowing what I'm going to play. And maybe, I, maybe it's because I knew that nobody's going to be there. It's going to be empty. And if, if, if I make a mistake or if I take 
if I take some time to think about what I'm going to play next, I could, I could edit it later on the video because it's going to be videotaped and later broadcast. So there's time for editing. So I went in without a song list. And I sat there in the sanctuary and, and I began playing without knowing what I'm playing. I had no plan. And I started playing an improvisation in Dina Hawan, which is a, a sentimental uh, mode from the Middle East. It's, it, it's similar to the minor mode in Western um, music. And so I, I start playing and somehow out of that improvisation, my fingers and my heart led me to something that I never played in these, in these events, in the sanctuary. I never played that melody before on the oud in, in public. I never ever performed that. And that was the National Anthem of Israel, which is a lo old longing melody, f longing for the homeland, longing for hope, uh, longing for return to a homeland. Um, it's all about hope and longing. And here I am in the middle of COVID in an empty synagogue and, and I'm just going into that melody called Hatikva, the hope, which is based on an East European traditional folk melody. And this melody was created way before the modern state of Israel. It was adapted as a national anthem in 1948 but it's older than 1948. And it's originally not an Israeli tune. And I'm playing it. And it was, it was emotional. And it was recorded. And then, without stop, I went into another uh, Jewish Iraqi prayer about a dove from far away. And then it was just a wonderful flow. Things just came to me. And I went into another prayer, and then another prayer. And uh, there was few pr prayers that I always play in those solo oud meditations, and there were some that I didn't plan on. Um, let me look at, at the list, and I can tell you... Um, Beside of Fatikva, there was also um, a prayer called Hallelujah, which comes, the melody comes from a Kawali Sufi Islamic origin called Allahu. So I played that. And so there was something beyond just me in that performance, in that recording. And when I was listening to the music and realizing that there was some special quality on that day in the synagogue coming through me, I thought I, I, I ought to share this with more people around the world. This should be shared me with more than just this <coughs> congregation of University Synagogue, which very gracefully and very kindly provided for the production of this event for their members, to enrich their members. But there are more people that could benefit from this and enjoy it. And so I decided to release it as an album, and uh, it is coming out on uh, in Israel uh, today. It's being released in Israel uh, by the third year, Magda Records, an Israeli uh, record label. Uh, it's uh, the vinyl going to be in stores in Israel soon. It's in stores all around the world. Um, it has, um, you know, worldwide distribution of the digital, the vinyl, and the CD. And now people could, uh, people everywhere could enjoy this uh, unique recording. Um, some of the uh, ornamentation, some of the embellishments that I did, uh, the some hint of flamenco, the some hint of jazz, the some hint of Middle Eastern music, of course. Uh, there's Eastern European elements, there are Middle Eastern elements, and um, there's a lot of conversation in the Oud. 
uh, to conclude this uh, meeting, I, I will play for you one more, one more uh, clip from um, from YouTube. We're gonna choose a clip of a piece called Ken Bakodesh. to uh, wish you a uh, happy spring, a happy season of freedom and rebirth. I hope that um, like the whole world, we are marching towards the light and marching towards healing and recovery. This is a time of recovery um, here in Los Angeles and I hear in Israel and uh, in other countries, I know things are very, very tough. Things are getting worse in France and possibly in other places, but I hope that the whole world will start getting better, and hopefully with the vaccines, and hopefully with a stronger immune system, and good music for resilience. So I highly recommend that you listen to a lot of good music, healing music, do movement, do yoga, take eat well, um, have healthy, healthy life, to help us and help all of, all of us get better. Uh, enjoy this album, this album called Nefesh, uh, Sacred Hebrew Prayers for Sola Oud, and it's available everywhere. Everywhere you, you look on the internet, you're going to find it. 
It's also going to be in some retail stores uh, in Israel, in, in the United States, and also in Europe. Uh, the vinyl will be, maybe some CDs. So enjoy it. You can always Google Nefesh Yuval Ran, and you're going to find it on the internet. You can listen to it on Amazon, on YouTube, on Spotify, on every, everything, everywhere. Thank you.